black excellence has fixed ESCOM. Now that the watch is gone, ESCOM's actually getting fixed. Hey, who knew, Ramon? So as you might have noticed, uh, load shedding has decreased substantially. I think we're between stage three and two on the best of days in South Africa. And according to the chair of ESCOM, he says this is due to one single fundamental fact. The plant operators are speaking directly to the senior executives at ESCOM. That is boosting morale and is also solving the problems very, very quickly. So ironically, by not having a chief operating officer, ESCOM is working just so much better. Paperwork in this country tends to get lost. It doesn't actually go anywhere. So when you file that paperwork, then people start adding extra tenders, kickbacks, and all sorts of other form of, well, we know what happens at ESCOM, right? When you go directly to the source and you go directly to the boss and say, hey, boss, we need to fix this. The boss goes, cool, fix it. Then you get something done really quickly. When something gets done quickly, it stops further damage to the coal stations occurring. So you may say, well, why is this only happening now? Well, the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is the green agenda has been driving ESCOM for some time. And it would appear, based on the current news, that the government is saying, goodbye, green agenda, hello, coal. And it is going all in on coal. And we are huge fans of coal on the morning shot for a very specific reason. We have one of the best coal fleets in the entire world. And according to this op-ed by Franz Grenier, who is a friend of the show, you only need to fix 5% of the coal fleet to end load shedding forever. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You only have to maintain and fix 5% of the coal fleet. That is not a lot of work to end load shedding. It'll take 12 months and maybe cost one or two or three billion rand. It is that easy to end load shedding. But unfortunately, it appears Andre de Reiter was so obsessed with green energy and was waiting for the coal fleet to be refurbished to a green energy thing that he didn't actually think. Let's solve load shedding first by using coal. And nothing that is showing up in the data as we speak right now. The ANC is going full on coal and it looks like load shedding is sort of being solved little by little. Yeah, this is unsurprising because obviously, as we all know, Gwen Matash is a big fan of coal. I'll tell you who's not a big fan of coal. The globalists. Remember, green agenda, world's all going to burn. Oh, big scary, climate change. Well, apparently, according to the globalists, can't have coal because coal's, you know, going to burn the planet. So what we actually need is solar panels. Now, the government's actually saying solar panels ain't going to fix this. What we actually need to do is we need to restore the coal fleets back to operational capacity. And we would agree with them. And according to Franz Grenier, if you do that, it solves load shedding. So you may ask the question, why wasn't this done before? Well, there was no real incentive for Dorator to do it. Because as Dorator says in his book, he was heavy on the green agenda. He liked the green agenda because his daughter would often have very long, meaningful conversations with him about how the planet was hurting and we needed to heal the planet. You know who really doesn't give a shit about the planet? You, because you'd like some electricity. And when your fridge goes offline and all your food spoils, you know what you're not thinking? Uh, at least I saved the rainforest, eh? No, you're thinking, fuck this shit. Can somebody just give me some electricity, please? Well, the ANC's heard you. Would you know it? And they're going to give you some electricity. One might be tempted to think, ah, check, the ANC got their hand together. They actually did things. They're doing things right. Is it correct for me to say the ANC is only doing this because they're worried about their electoral performance next year? And as we know, stage six don't look good for them, mate. Well, I mean, yes, Byron, of course they're doing this for electoral performance next year, but so freaking what? Right? I don't think people care that it makes the ANC look good. People just don't want load shedding. Whether they use cows, whether they use coal, whether they use penguins, whether they use blue whale blubber to make load shedding a thing of the past. The people will support it. And I stand for coal, and I think you stand for coal as well. But most importantly, what ESCOM is doing is not only sort of generally improving the maintenance of the coal power fleet, they also increase the diesel supply for the open gas turbines. Those turbines by themselves kick two stages of load shedding away completely. Yes, they spend billions of rands on diesel, but that is the cost of trying to end load shedding. I'm not saying ESCOM is going to solve the crisis. They're finally understanding how to solve it completely. And solving it is just using what they have already, rather than building windmills all over the place. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, what did they use the turbines before? Well, actually, they used to. Before Dorator, they used to do it all the time. In fact, 
a lot of our electricity came from the turbines. Problem is the turbines aren't exactly clean. As you'll know, if you run a generator in your house, they kick out a lot of pollution. The rates didn't really like them because, you know, they're dirty and stuff. And, you know, planets burning and crying and whatever other Karen comments he might have had. Now, the rate did say he actually wasn't entirely against using the turbines, but he said they weren't very cost effective. He said there were easier ways and cheaper ways to generate electricity, like, you know, solar and stuff. Problem is that solar capacity isn't there. You can't just plug the solar onto the systems. So you have to use what you've got. He didn't want to use what he got because it's going to hurt the planet. So he's going to use the things that weren't going to hurt the planet. But he didn't have them. So he had a conundrum. Either I fix what I have and I give you electricity, or I promise you a bullshit future, and maybe you'll get it in the future. But we'll never know, will we? What did all this mean for the average punter? Stage six load shedding. And no real end in sight. Least we forget that virtually every day this year, we've had load shedding. Yeah, so what is the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen? Well, the moral of the story is that to solve load shedding, you just fix what's already there. We know with a &T, maintenance is not a good thing, whether it be child maintenance or maintenance for power stations. But it is a far easier thing to just fix what's there than to basically create a revolution of green energy and build new generation, right? And what it looks like is the ANC is going to understand that. They're going to fix the coal fleet. They're going to fix Kuberg, and they're going to run the gas turbines. That's all you need to end load shedding. And then if Americans really want a huge solar farm and they really want windmills all over the place, let them pay for it themselves. We are completely on board with ESCOM and the ANC in terms of solving load shedding. And that means going to coal.